what a difference a week can make. Uh, last week, I was here after the Brentford game speaking about Ten Hag punishing the players after an abysmal performance against Brentford. And here we are talking about this new mentality that we saw against Liverpool that not many of us, any of us, expected to see against Liverpool. And for me, I need to do this video. I want to do this video. It's vitally important that we take this as, the, in my opinion, the main takeaway from that game, how the players responded to Ten Hag's punishment. It could have gone one of two ways. And it went the right way. And I want to speak about that in this video on, on the methods of Ten Hag, on how they worked and how this is the this has to be the beginning of something new. Alain has been drawn in the sand. We've got the Liverpool game now as an example of what we can do and what these players should be doing under Eric Ten Hag. And I'm going to speak about it in this video. So make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. But let's get into it because, I mean, I've got a lot of time for Eric Ten Hag. I've got a lot of time for what he's trying to do. I absolutely stand by what he is attempting to change in Manchester United, but it will not be easy. We know that. But so if you look at the preseason, I covered it in so much detail here on United People's TV. Stand by the fact that I'm proud that these videos have probably been the, most, the best ones I've made this summer. Ten Hag's methods, they seem to work in preseason, but they didn't work against Brentford. And there were so many questions as to why that was the case. And after Brentford, we saw what the punishment was from Eric Ten Hag. He took the players and he made them run 13.8 kilometers each because that was collectively the distance that Brentford had run more than Manchester United the week before. Uh, for, for some people, it was seen as some sort of like militaristic over-the-top punishment. For me, if you're going to play like kids, yeah, you can get treated like kids. And I think it was a very good call for him to do. And we clearly seen by that performance against Liverpool Bearing in mind, there's only, what, eight days apart, nine days apart, polar opposite teams. Could not have been any more different. And one thing has come out, which I think is it's such a fantastic piece of management. For Eric Ten Hag here, uh, it's, it's come out and reported now by The Athletic and by The Mirror as well. The Ten Hag not only forced the players to run 13.8 kilometers, but he joined in with them as well. He took part in that training session. And for me, that's such a smart piece of management to show that collective responsibility. He could have just sat there, could have said, but the, the players couldn't really have complained that they were being punished like that. But collectively, he took it on board there. And it goes to show from that Liverpool game that something clicked this week, something worked this week, something tweaked this week, because not only did we beat Liverpool, but we... I would say dominated Liverpool, and I would say 2-1 sort of flattered them. Manchester United covered 114 kilometres in that game against Liverpool, almost 20 kilometres more than Brentford and way more than Liverpool. We got more tackles than them, more blocks than them, more goals than them. Overall, it was just a completely and utterly different performance against a far better opposition. Of course, it's part of it is going to be, yes, uh, the, the players... It's, easy, it's easier, I imagine, to get G'd up for a game against Liverpool than it is to get G'd up for a game against Brentford or Southampton or West Brom or anything like that. But across the game of a 38-game season, you have to have the mentality to, to bring that every single time. But this sort of mentality that Ten Hag's trying to bring into this club, it's this warrior mentality. It's this new ride or die, collective unit. If one domino falls, they all fall. And this is why the new importance, the new signing, sorry, are so important for Eric Ten Hag. Martinez was an absolute beast. Butcher, Pitbull, whatever superlative you want to use to describe his performance, they're all spot on. He was phenomenal against Liverpool after Jamie Carragher led the way by questioning his height against Brentford, which did get exposed, which did get used as a weakness. Ten Hag stuck by his man and he delivered with a fantastic performance. As Dil Matt, that's, that's, that's my favourite picture of the season so far. I'm looking forward to seeing when a picture beats that. But look at that. He was fantastic, man. Just puts a big smile on your face. Seeing players play like that. And when you consider that we're about to add Casemiro into that mix, you can see where Eric Ten Hag is trying to take us towards. What he's trying to change inside these players. And it's why new signings like Martinez, like Malasia like Casemiro, and maybe like Anthony too. You need the right personalities to be able to get your ideas across as a manager. 
And we saw that in that game that he can and has got his ideas across and that these players respond to it. And that's a big, big difference and a big takeaway from between the Brentford and the Liverpool games is this sort of punishment from Ten Hag could have, I suppose, gone one of two ways. It could have been a case where the players went, oh, you know what, sod this, man. Sod this. I'm not going to just run around. But they didn't. They all did the hard work. And honestly, I think that is a, that, that's a significant part of it. Management is extremely difficult. I'm not talking about managing football clubs. I mean, managing people in general. The nuances of management, the, doing the right things to do and how it's going to affect uh, mentality and, and approach and attitude. It's hard, man. It's hard. I've only, managed, I've only managed people on a very, very micro scale, let alone millionaires who all think they're the best footballers in the world. It's tough, but with Eric Ten Hag there, the decisions that he made for that game in terms of the punishment post-Brentford, the work in the build-up to the week, it all clearly had a massive impact, as did all the decisions on the day which were bold and they paid off. And of course, the biggest one was putting a captain, Harry Maguire, on the bench. And it is a statement because it, the armband means nothing. If you're underperforming, you will be on the bench. And I think that back five has played itself into the starting 11 for Southampton. I'd be very surprised if he breaks up that martinez Varan partnership when it was the best that we've seen in a game of that scale. Uh, we've seen good-ish performances against you know mid-level teams, but not Liverpool. We pumped us 4-0 and 5-0 last year. Varane and Martinez will start that game against Southampton. I'd be very surprised if they don't. But it wasn't just Harry Maguire who got the chop. Of course it wasn't. Cristiano Ronaldo and Luke Shaw. And if you're looking at the people who came into their positions, you see, not Eric Ten Hag, Martinez came in. Well, he didn't come in, but you know what I mean. Varane came and played alongside him. Madasia came in for Luke Shaw. And it's these different sorts of attitudes and approaches to help transform that team. The bold decisions paid off. Dropping Maguire, dropping Ronaldo, dropping Shaw. Also, bringing on Martial at half time. Massive, I wouldn't say it was a massive call. It was a big decision to do at half time, and it massively worked. He was pulling Van Dyke out of position. Van Dyke didn't really, for a player who literally has been probably the best centre back in the league for the last couple of years, he got pulled out of position. Martial was controlling that game, not Van Dyke. And it's not just, it, 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 this is what I mean. There's quite a lot of things that have changed this week. From the, from the approach in, in coaching and the punishment to the training and the changes in the team, Ten Hag also showed that he does have a, a little bit of a pragmatic side that I didn't particularly think he would have. A couple of stats here that stand out for me from the game. Looking at the top graph, this is Ten Hag, this is De Gea's distribution against Brentford. You can see here so many passes going sideways here and only a couple of balls going long. Look at his distribution against Liverpool. So much more was long. And as you can see, the red one is unsuccessful. So he had a less completion in terms of the passing percentage, but Manchester United didn't invite pressure on into our own box, did we? And that made a big, big difference. So it goes to show that he can and does have a pragmatic side to him. He can chop and change it, even if he doesn't truly believe it, if it's going to help the team. And that clearly was the case against Liverpool with De Gea's distribution. Distribution, sorry. Clearly, we're not good enough at playing out from the back just yet. And I don't particularly think Casemiro changes that too much. That's what De Jong is there for. And that's what, what, what De Jong was going to change. But on top of that, you know, Ten Hag standing in support of his players too. Martinez, I mean, he could have dropped anybody that game against uh, Liverpool. Let's be completely honest. They were so bad against Brentford. But he stuck behind Martinez and he absolutely delivered. That's the level... That there were new levels set in that game against Liverpool, which now can be used as the blueprint going forward for the rest of the season. What those players did there, they responded to the training. They responded to their coach, demanding changes, and they did it. Such a collective team performance there against Liverpool. It really was... Like, it was so good to be there. It really TRA, fair play to... Uh, the lads, everybody who's organised and created that section, it felt like an away end. My shins are completely bruised. And I don't think I've ever had that sort of atmosphere inside Old Trafford. It was wonderful to be in that. But seeing the response from these players for their manager, that's what we needed after Brentford. Because it could have gone the other way. I wouldn't have said that losing to Liverpool would have been the end of the season, but if we didn't see a response from the players, it, it, would, it would have been more evidence towards the fact that they're not buying into Ten Hag and what he's asking them to do. But they are. They did. 
we can now use that going forward and add in new signings. It goes to show the importance of new signings. But Ten Hag as a coach, I've not questioned him as a coach. I think the mentality of the players was fragile against Brighton and Brentford. But we've shown against Liverpool now, we can do it. They can do it. Those players there can do what their coach is asking them to do. And they can be the team that's leading in the stats. 20 kilometres more than Brentford. It's not the be-all and end-all of winning a football game. But simply put, if you don't work hard enough and the other team works harder than you, they will probably get more opportunities than you. They probably will get more goal-scoring opportunities than you. They will have more of the ball and they will control more of the game. It's basic. But if you don't do it, it's like cutting your legs off. I'll tell you what. Everybody responded. And for me, that's, that, that's probably the biggest takeaway I'm taking from that game. It was the collective overall performance as a fucking team, man. As Ten Hag said in the game, after the game, sorry, look, they can fucking play football. His words, not mine. But I'm happy to see that we've got a response. I'm happy that this man is our coach. And add Casemiro and Anthony into that. Get that sort of performance there against Liverpool. That's the new norm going forward. Don't accept any lower standards, Martinez. Start slapping people upside the head if they're not doing it. Same goes for Malasia. Same goes for Ten Hag. That's the performance now. Follow it up. That's the next step. Let's see if we can do it against Brentford. Can do it against Leicester. Can do it. Not, it's easy enough getting G'd up for big games. We need to see it across a 38 game season. But with this man in charge, I think we can do it. I'm, I'm confident. That game against Liverpool has given me a, a bit of confidence that, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to seeing what's coming next.